What's happening, guys? What's going on, YouTube? You've tuned in to Rules for Rebels. Um, so I'm going to be linking uh, in the description box below and probably dropping a card above if I remember um, to a video that James Kingston made today. Now, uh, I haven't decided exactly what we're going to title today's video. It's probably something like, has YouTube sold out or YouTube's gone commercial? Um, and I kind of wanted to talk about some of the big changes going on at YouTube. Uh, for anybody who's thinking about getting started on YouTube, um, have some advice for you. Don't do anything controversial uh, because it's going to be really hard for you to make it, uh, let alone make any money on, on the YouTube platform. And then also this kind of topic that we're going to be discussing today, I also think it's going to kind of shape the direction of YouTube in a big way and, and kind of in a negative way, making YouTube go even further into the direction of like the same nonsense, the same bullshit that we see on TV and away from kind of like more raw content, more authentic content, more uh, individual creator content. So uh, let me kind of back this up a little bit. So I, I saw a video or actually let's back it up even further. So for those of you guys who don't know who James Kingston is, he's the, the gentleman hanging off the building here. Um, a while back, I, I kind of started following some of these like rooftopper guys. So Two of the bigger ones that come to mind, or two of the ones that I can at least think of that I followed in the past, are Illsight, a uh, teenage kid from, uh, I think, Hong Kong, who like climbs buildings and cranes and hangs off stuff, um, and then James Kingston, who, who's another another popular one. Uh, James Kingston is, is a dude from the UK who, who does this stuff, and uh, he's kind of stopped making content over the course of the past six months or year. I think he was kind of battling some depression and things like that. Uh, but also, it doesn't really help that, that YouTube's kind of made it impossible for him to, to kind of run his channel. And a lot of these, like, rooftopping, parkour-type channels have kind of run into the, the, the same fate. Um, so he put out a video, the first one he's put out in, in quite a while, but he put out a video earlier today kind of talking about what's been going on with his YouTube channel over the past six months, what's been going on with him. And, and essentially, YouTube ha has demonetized all his videos, which it, it's bad enough that he, he can't earn anything off the videos. But, you know, like we always talk about, you know, YouTube, YouTube ad revenue is, is like, you know, for most people, it's a gravy. It's, it's the icing on a cake. It's not really meant to be money that you live off of and not really meant to be your main money. Most people are making more money off sponsored videos or affiliate stuff. You know, there's a lot of be lot better ways and a lot more reliable ways and a lot of ways to make a lot more money uh, than just YouTube ad revenue. Right. Um, and we'll kind of get into another topic I wanted to talk about is. I used to kind of criticize people when they when they said, oh, well, YouTube's censoring me. Well, when YouTube cuts off your ad revenue, they're not really censoring you. Um, you know, they're just saying, you know, we're not going to promote these videos to our advertisers. Like, you know, if you want to make make uh, make your own money in other ways, you know, you're, you're free to do that. But James Kingston kind of really brought a, a point to light or really shed some light on something that, that I never realized or at the very least never thought about. And essentially, YouTube promotes videos that have ads because YouTube is a business and YouTube wants to make money. And uh, obviously, you know, having people watch videos where advertisers are paying for views, that's going to make YouTube more money than watching a video uh, that advertisers don't pay for reviews. So what what videos do you think YouTube pushes in searches? What videos do you think YouTube pushes in, um, you know, those sidebar related videos? Well, of, of course, it's, it's going to mainly be uh, videos with advertising. So James Kingston said, by having his videos demonetized, he said, that's not really the end of the world, right? He sells merch. He does other things. He can make his money. He's got 600-something th thousand followers. But as soon as all his videos were demonetized, and I'll get into a little bit more detail about that, although I will link to the video where you can kind of hear all the details from him. Uh, but as soon as YouTube cut off the ad revenue, it kind of stopped his channel from being kind of pushed and promoted by YouTube and, and sidebars and things like that. And that kind of con you know completely stopped the growth of his channel, period. Um and so in a way, being demonetized is censorship, because if you don't have ads on your videos, um, you're not going to be seen and you're not going to get views, period. Um, and, and even for somebody like James Kingston, who has 638, 658,000 followers, whatever it is, well over a half million followers, even with that kind of following and fan base, and he's got very engaged followers as well, even with all that going for him, without YouTube pushing and promoting your content, you're really not going to get anywhere. Um yeah, I mean, shit, look at my channel. On my channel, I got 80-something thousand subscribers. I get, like, you know, 100, 100 views on a video. So, I, I mean, that, that kind of goes to show it right there. But uh, So let, let me kind of take you back. This is going to be kind of a, a rambling video or whatever. But so 
a lot of people have been cl complaining that YouTube's gone commercial, YouTube's gotten away from raw content from individual creators, and YouTube now is like Jimmy Kimmel, you know, Jimmy Kimmel clips being played, and like, if you look at what's trending on YouTube, if you look at the homepage on YouTube, like, it's not individual creators like, like YouTube started out as. It, it's all kind of like movies and commercial stuff and, and big-time movie stars and record labels. Like, that's what YouTube's promoting. And a lot of people have kind of complained that YouTube has kind of gotten away from its roots. I think this all kind of goes back to Adpocalypse when, like, this shift really first started happening and YouTube kind of started favoring, you know, the Hollywood, mass media, whatever you want to call it. Um, and what's kind of ironic about that, I've talked about this before, but like uh, during the Las Vegas shootings, uh, CNN was like, see, pretty much all the news channels, but, you know, we'll pick on CNN because I, I don't particularly care for them. CNN was like covering the Las Vegas shooting live. And I'm sure you have like families tuning in to see what's going on. They have loved ones in the area. They have loved ones who live in the city. Uh, they have loved ones who are at the concert. And during during the, the live broadcast of what's going on, Hey, we'd like to chime in to uh, say that you should drink Dr. Pepper. Hey, you should buy a Pepsi, right? So all these, you know, Pepsi, Dr. Pepper, Coke, you know, all these, all these companies ha have no problem uh, getting their message out there during a live mass shooting. Um, yet these same advertisers who had no problem running their ads during a live mass shooting being covered on CNN, uh, they're all the same advertisers who kick up a stink about... Uh, kick up a stink to YouTube and Google about their videos being played on or about their advertisements being run on videos whose content they don't agree with on YouTube. And I think it's a lot more uh, about, you know, the the media trying to stop kind of losing control. No, nobody has cable TV. Nobody gives a shit about newspapers like the the, the power has really shifted from, uh, you know, big media and record labels and everything else power and movie companies. The power has shifted away from them to individual creators. Um, and I think it's kind of like their last dying grasp uh, of trying to hold on to that. So anyhow, you know, CNN and these companies were, were kind of pushing their ads on the live shooting, but then they, they push, put up a stink about YouTube, and then we see YouTube kind of sided with them, and that's when the whole ad, ad crackdown thing started. Um, or we could look to, like, the YouTube Rewind of 2018, right? Like, a lot of people criticized the YouTube Rewind uh, of 2018, saying that... Uh, you know, really no small creators were, were, were featured in that. Not, not the people who started YouTube, not what YouTube is really about. I think a lot of people come to YouTube because they don't want to see the, the polished, normal PC stuff or whatever uh, of cable TV. They, they, they want to see, you know, unique people, individual, they, you know, unique content, uh, more authentic content. And that's why people come to YouTube, yet YouTube seems to be trying to kind of bring over the cookie cutter, very vanilla content from TV and, and movies and everything else. Um, so I, I think that's kind of another example of, of this kind of like battle going on or whatever. Uh, the reason that I kind of bring all of this up is YouTube has been cracking down on a lot of these like parkour guys and, uh, you know, extreme sports, rooftoppers, whatever. Um, and in some cases, shutting down the channels, in some cases, demonetizing them. I know James, James Kingston mentioned uh, a number of his, his videos had been demonetized over the past couple weeks, and he thought it was kind of weird, but, you know, whatever that happens on YouTube. And then one day he woke up, and literally his entire YouTube catalog had been demonetized. Uh, couldn't get in touch with YouTube. I, I think his, his ad network got in touch or got on a call with YouTube on his behalf, and I guess they were like, tell James to put all his videos on private, all his climbing videos on private. And, uh, you know, that might help. And it's like you're talking to an actual rep from YouTube and they're telling you to basically delist every one of your videos that you've ever made and put a ton of time and effort into. And not even that that will fix the problem, but that, quote unquote, might help. Um, and so he said that was kind of crazy. Well, six months later, the, the problem still exists. His, his videos still aren't monetized. And, and why he said this is such a problem, and what's kind of interesting about this, you know, back when back during Adpocalypse, when a lot of people were like, I'm being censored, I'm being censored. You know, my initial reaction was kind of like, look, man, you know, YouTube, it's YouTube's at the end of the day. You know, I don't necessarily like it or agree with it. I think there's plenty of companies who wouldn't mind and would actually like to run advertisements on, you know, more controversial or risque type content. And I think Google should just come out with a way to like, do you want to advertise on you know, when I say adult content, I don't mean like porn, but do you want to advertise on more mature content? Yes or no. And advertisers can either opt into that 
or and, and and be part of that, or they can opt out of that and just appear on Lego videos or whatever else they want to appear on. Um, obviously, Google, you know, that's not what Google ha- has decided to do. Uh, and James James Kingston was kind of talking about the back end of his YouTube dashboard, and he said, you know, back when his videos were monetized, you know, you can you can see the the activity going on on your video and on your channel in real time. So if somebody starts watching your video, you can see that. If somebody stops watching your video, you can see that. And he said when he used to hop on and look at some of these videos, like any any given video, several hundred people would be watching it. Never since the the demonetization, or, or even if he just went onto a video that a particular video that had been demonetized, he said he might see one viewer pop up like every sixty minutes, every hour. Um, so in a way being demonetized is censorship just because you're not going to get any if your video isn't monetized youtube's not going to push it and if youtube doesn't push your video then it's basically you're just your views evaporate uh nobody watches your stuff and your message goes away and, and why this is especially interesting with uh a guy the size of james, King, james kingston's channel is you could say well you know you know that might be true for somebody with a thousand subscribers or ten thousand subscribers or even fifty thousand subscribers but somebody with 600, you know, over a, over a half million subscribers, somebody like that should have a large enough built-in audience that they don't necessarily need YouTube pushing their message. Uh, but even for for a channel of his size and somebody like him, um, you know, it, it's still not enough. You you still need YouTube. So um, I, I guess kind of where I'm going with this whole and oh, you know, one thing in defense of YouTube. So uh, I made a video about this the other day. I haven't put it out yet. Maybe I'll put it out later tonight or tomorrow. But uh. My, my man Brian Phobos had did a video. Uh, it was like a BitConnect update video. And it was kind of interesting. Uh, Crypto Nick's real name came out. Um, and Brian Phobos kind of updated us on what's going on with the whole uh, SEC case against BitConnect. Uh, all the BitConnect YouTubers. And even YouTube was brought into the SEC lawsuit as well as another lawsuit about BitConnect. And you, they're going after YouTube saying, well, you... You allowed this content to be posted and therefore kind of helped foster this uh, pyramid scheme or this selling of unlicensed securities or whatever. And ultimately, man, I mean, at the end of the day, like, you know, I I don't have the stats in front of me, but like, do you know how many hours of YouTube are uploaded like every single second? It's like thousands, if not millions of hours of content are uploaded to YouTube like every second, every hour. You know how many creators are on YouTube? You know how many how many videos there are on YouTube and to expect YouTube to, to be able to police all of that is just absolutely ridiculous. It kind of reminds me of like Backpage getting shut down. Although that, that one's even more, more that that one's not quite as good of a case, but like Backpage was simply a platform where people could post things for sale. Um, obviously the, the main draw of Backpage was prostitutes and back rub girls would be, uh, or body rub girls would be posting their ads on there. Uh, but the government shut down their website and went after them and was kind of like, you're responsible for what gets posted on your platform. And I think that's kind of a, a dangerous direction that society and media is going, that people are, you're responsible for what somebody posts on your site. Like if, if I have a blog that allows comments and somebody posts a comment, should I really be held responsible or liable for what somebody else posted? Like, am I really responsible for keeping up with that? And that's kind of the direction that things are going. And so, like I said, YouTube's been drawn into this BitConnect lawsuit. So in a way, I kind of see where YouTube's coming from in like, oh, well, we really have to monitor what's, what gets uploaded to our platform because of nonsense like that happening. Um, but, but even here, like, how far do we take this? So basically, I think YouTube has two issues with like James Kingston and people like him. YouTube's really been cracking out on like, like dangerous stunts and things like that. So YouTube doesn't want people posting themselves hanging off of buildings like this. I, I assume A, because it's not advertiser friendly and B, because... They don't want some middle school kid going and trying to hang off a building and falling and dying, and it becomes a big uh, PR nightmare for YouTube, right? Like, that's kind of understandable, but, like, how far do we really take this? Like, is riding a motorcycle dangerous? Can I not post a video of myself riding a motorcycle? How about something like extreme sports, Like right? Like, Red, Red Bull is, is essentially a media company. Red Bull has all dangerous sports. Or how about something like X Games? Like, is jumping a motorcycle over a bunch of cars, like, is, is that uh a dangerous activity that can't be posted on youtube how about uh like wingsuit flying like how about all these other activities like are those okay on youtube because there's uh, an ambulance waiting by or because they're a professional doing it like where do we draw the line between rooftoppers and parkour guys versus like extreme sports it it just to me seems to be a very very kind of slippery slope 
Um, and, and I think things going in this direction are going to negatively affect uh, the, the content on YouTube and the YouTube platform. Uh, I guess it depends on how you look at it. But if you're somebody like me who purposely doesn't watch TV because I don't want to watch another episode, I was going to say How I Met Your Mother just because that's the first show that came to mind, but it's actually a decent show. But because I don't want to watch the garbage on YouTube and I'd rather watch more interesting, more unique, more raw, more authentic content, uh, I go to YouTube instead of, you know, cable or Netflix or whatever else. And by by making it harder for, and it's not even about parkour or rooftoping, it's about any type of content that's kind of more controversial. Uh, but by making it, it more difficult for these people to run their channels and make money, or even, you know, even take YouTube ad revenue out of the equation, but by making it harder for these people to actually even have their content viewed to where they could, you know, build an audience on Patreon or monetize in other ways or sell merch, um, yeah, you're almost making it impossible for somebody to operate any channel that's anything outside the norm or controversial at all. So um, I think I've kind of rambled rambled on long enough, but I, I think you guys probably get my point. Uh, I'm going to link to uh, James Kingston's video down below, and I'll link to Brian Phobos's as well, just because I imagine somebody will probably be interested in the, the BitConnect update. He did a great video on that. So I'll link to both those down below, maybe drop some cards above. Uh, but that's, that's my little rant for today. Uh, let me know your guys' thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you on the next one.